I'm looking for artifacts. I don't see anything. Yeah, I know. I see an oil can right there. All right. I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Laid Back History. Um, joined, of course, with, uh, not of course, but I mean, everybody should know who you are by they now. They should by, yeah, yeah so hopefully by now. Joined by the wild coat himself, yes. Brian Cunning. So That's exactly right. Not by, joined you know, by, joined, joined with. with. Joined with. I don't want to be joined with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Conjoined. Yeah, that's not a good idea. Uh, joined by? I don't know what the right wording for that is. Um, no, uh, 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 no, accompany me. No, that's not. Yeah, good. I don't uh, know. Uh, We're just. Gonna, I am joined. That doesn't even sound right. Something's working to figure that out. So Brian's here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Brian's here. My guest today is. My guest today is Brian Cunning. There that's you go. That's better. The wild goat himself. Exactly. We're not cutting and doing this again. We're just going to go. Going to keep going. With yeah. It. So, but I want to welcome you back to to this uh, to another episode of Laid Back History. Today's kind of a cool episode. It's kind of um, a dirty episode. What's that? It's a dirty episode. It's a dirty episode. It's a little yeah. dirty back here. Uh, but, so what we're talking about today is actually, uh, we're going to talk about the Palmer House or the John Julius Lemoyne House and our new research and education center. And I think I titled this uh, Visiting the Past to see the future oh i like that yes i i thought it was pretty clever myself actually um, one good thought for the week what's that one good thought for the <laughs> i week. don't know it's gone <laughs> but um basically you know we kind of as we stand here today we're seeing the past and future kind of intersect mm -hmm. because we've got the past the the 1826 john julius lemoyne house and the future is what's going to be behind it uh we're going to be building our new research and education center which a few months ago i don't remember exactly when it was we went through the house we talked about yeah. uh what was going on um but we've actually got started with our construction project. Uh, so we have been doing the demo work. You know, the, the idea was to keep the original portion of the home. So we want to take the 1826 portion built by John Julius Lemoyne in 1826 uh, as his uh, new residence after jo uh, Francis Lemoyne took over ownership of the uh, of the Lemoyne house because John got into a little bit of debt. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> but at least uh, he moved across the street. Yeah, he just he could see his original home. Exactly. He could look out the front window all the time. <laughs> and see it. I wish I, I, wish I was there. there. Yeah. Why can't I be up there in those beautiful gardens on top of that I know. roof? He's got stone. Oh, I've got his brick. So, but John, uh, you know, he built his uh, he built his new home. Uh, still practice medicine at, across the road with his son Francis. But uh, what we want to do is we're going to take the facade of this house, the interior. We're going to just preserve the original features that are in there. I don't want to say we're going to restore that, but we're going to preserve those original features that are left. On the facade of it, we're going to do our best to kind of take the brick down, uh, get the paint off of it, and do a a uh, modified restoration to the uh, to the facade of it. So we want to get it looking like it did in 1826, uh, but we are going to have to modernize a few things. Uh, you won't be able to tell, uh, but we're gonna have to modernize a th few things because we are gonna use this as our offices. Are you gonna take this, isn't there like three lights from the 1970s cut into that front door? Yes, we're gonna take those <laughs> lights off. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, the, the so windows. so 70s, when you look at that, you're just like, yeah. takes you back to shag carpets and lava lamps. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this house took you a lot back to that. Uh, I think the Palmers, who were wonderful people, uh, they, they were great, but I think they did a renovation every decade. So you could just go from like, 30s into here and you had 40s then you had 50s, 50s. then you had 60s in the dining room which then was, there was a, something going oh on. i don't know what that was <laughs> well i mean you can see at some point we had this beautiful wallpaper wow. um it probably was really great at that time you know yeah, it was probably I'm, expensive and there's know? more you can see more of it up there yeah, there's, there's like multiple layers up yeah there. we we came oh there's more over there we had some what, horrible wallpaper whatever that is I, i'm not a fan of wallpaper uh and that was like yeah i don't know that what was that a cupboard it's that's like, what that was it was but yeah. it was like tack paper that they put on there. I and don't know. painted. And painted. Yeah. And it looks like it was green at one point. Oh, uh, it was multiples. John Stavovi, uh, one of our board members, says that this house had colors that do not exist in nature. <laughs> <laughs> so, because there was a jet tub upstairs that was like wow. pink. Uh, a it horrible was. pink with blue tile. Oh, it's horrible. It's a big bathroom, though. It was I mean, a big it was bathroom. Big. Yes, it was a big bathroom. So we'll give it that. But, um, 
you know, what we're seeing now, what's great is that when we started this project, we knew about the 1826 portion, but there were a lot of questions about the addition that came off the back of it. When it was built, um, you know, how many different additions there were, mm -hmm. how much work was done to it. And we're starting to find some answers as we've, uh, as, as we've been doing the demo work. And so some things that have come out that we didn't know. Well, so, we kind of want to talk about some of those. And then we just found something today that I'm excited about. Uh, I think it's going to be really cool and we're going to wait. I'm not going to tell you what that yep. is yet, but we'll get to that. So it's a great archaeological discovery. It is a great archaeological discovery. And I have an archaeologist right. with me. So, um, but the, uh, you know, what we're kind of looking at is the original back to the house. And what we've determined is, you know, we were looking to see where the original doors were coming off the back. And, you know, so first off, off. We had a door here that came into the addition yep. and we had a door here. Yeah. Well, we were trying to decide was this original or was this one original because the kitchen sat on this side of the house. Yeah. So the kitchen sat over here. It was back about what? what's that about 25 feet? Probably. Maybe 25 feet. Right off the end of this. It was right off the end of this. This, this wood little. Here. Yeah, this little, little floor. Yeah, this floor. is the original wood floor we're standing okay. on right now, but that's the only thing left. Wow. Uh, but so it sat back, back in there. So we we're trying to figure out was the door over here that would take you on the same side mm -hmm. as the kitchen or over or was it over here um which as you said would put it directly in line yeah with the front because door. if i'm not mistaken you know i'll probably have some architectural historian come and slap me upside <laughs> the head but i'm pretty sure this is a side hall construction because right. you have the hall and then you have the room so a side hall with your rooms on this side so you'd have a door directly. The door would go directly behind because okay. I'm pretty sure the ones I've always seen, you go in one door and you can see a door going out the back end. Well, and you can see the way this is built over here. You can actually see the bricks that have been turned on their yeah. edge, which creates a... Um, a lintel. A lintel, thank right? you. Yeah, it's a lintel. I think. Yeah, good yeah. enough. That yeah. creates a lintel so that it supports up above, yep. so that it supports for the doorway. But over here, which I don't know if the camera can actually pick it up, over here you don't see that. No, you don't have that same construction. Right, so it basically it looks like they used wood to support it, to brace it up, which would be because they broke the brick out to yep. put this doorway in. Yep. Maybe it was a window at one point. I would know? imagine there would have been a window there at one point. Okay, so it could have been a window, uh, but it's not original. So we think we have the original door, so you had the front door coming back to the original, you know, out the original yep. back. A rear, a rear exit. Now, what we know is that this, where we're standing now, was added on later. At some point. Yeah, so I wasn't sure if it was added on as two stories or, or if it a, was a like they, they closed in between the house and the kitchen and then added a second story on top. But we found a few things during demo that's mm -hmm. making us think it was added on all together as a two-story addition because it's kind of hard to see. And um, tell you what, I'm going to go over here and I'm actually going to zoom in uh, and let Brian it. point that out a little bit. All right, Brian, what, what did we find there? So you can see right here are the, well, I don't want to call it remnants, but this is part of a um, fireplace. So the entrance to the fireplace. Um, you can see these, these are, I think, are they called soldiers when they're turned this way, I think? They are soldiers, yes. Yep, so they've been turned this way, and then here's your firebox underneath. But the question is, oh, right here's the firebox underneath, and here's And that's the, been closed in with, it, it was closed in much later with uh, more modern brick Yeah, and because you mortar. see this, you can see this here is definitely different than this mortar. This is a, this is a, like an older mortar mix here, but this is modern. Okay. Could have been done at the same, you know what? It could have been when they put this beautiful stuff on here. They close they that in because that, that kind of looks like the same kind of mortar sitting there that they threw up against it. And then we also found one up above. So if we scroll up a little bit. Yep, you can see the same construction right up there. You can kind of see the same idea. We've got the, the soldier bricks, you know. Yep. So what we're thinking is that this is the original, the original chimney for the fireplaces that are on the other side of this in the main part of yes. the house. And then when or they much. put the addition on, that they probably broke out some of the brick um they broke out some of the brick and yeah you can um, you can see right here is where the regular courses ran and then these are either probably broken or cut or they were put in or something okay but you can see that right there so these were added in when they put this addition on so originally we thought you know we didn't know those were there i mean until we started the demo we didn't know those were there 
But we were trying to figure out whether or not the, there was maybe a small portion of the house on the back of it when it was the 1826 portion was built. But a couple things gave us a, gave us a clue that that's not the case. This brick wall that's coming off, if this was original, if this wall was completely original, um, am I, can you see? I, I don't know if I'm pointing in the right direction. I'm I don't think you are. Now nah, we can see it. There it is. Okay, so if you look here, if this was a part of the original construction, the way this is built into the wall, it would have went all, all the way, the way up, up to the second yep. floor. But you can see here, it's not. It's missing. So it looks like what that was is, you know, this was, they broke out some of these bricks and then, um, what's that called? Dovetailed it in. Yeah. They actually dovetailed this in to create this wall coming out. But you had four joists going across here, so they probably it was probably sitting on top of them. I don't, I, you know. I don't yeah, know that's they, strange why they yeah. did it like that. I'm not sure, but because it, it goes up for some distance, you can see yeah. where the horsehair plaster is. Unless once they built this, they just had a pillar that they were sitting on top of. Yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of. But I think this gives it away that this is not original. That no. this wall here coming out. It would have been original. tied in all the if way. It, all the all yeah. yeah all at once. So you have an addition here that ended up being a, a two-story addition. Um, then over here where the back door, original back door came out was a porch. They put a porch on there. Eventually they closed that in to make it a room. They closed in the second floor to make it another room. What's amazing about that is it had a po slanted porch roof that when they closed in the second floor, they just <laughs> thought, eh. Why level it? We'll just keep the, you know, the you know, walking floor. up there's like in that thing, like you know, the Noah's Ark over in oh, uh, Kennywood. Yeah, it was like you know, you're walking across it, and you can. I know, and it kind of felt side. like it was going to give it a yeah. time. Yep. And even here, you could. T I mean, there was no, nothing, you know, really for pillars for the floor joists. They just sat on the ground. Hmm. Um, but that's the you know, what we're thinking is that you have this original 1826 structure, eventually in addition, break out for the fireplaces, which another thing you can see is that later on, um, whether it's when they closed these in or what it was, but they have places for either a Franklin stove yep. or a pot belly stove, most Something. likely a Franklin stove. Yep. And then up top, which the camera probably can't pick up right now, you can see two more uh, where there were pot belly stove, or sorry, Franklin stoves. The one thing that I always wondered, I never understood, was why they did that over there. What and do you mean? probably can't see. Is this this here? Why did they put this in this wall like this? You ever noticed that? Because that almost oh. made it look like this was a breezeway put in later. Like this was this was a building that then this was appended. Then they built this breezeway when they closed it. Well, which is another thing that threw me off. Yep. You know, so what we're talking about here, is this right here. Yeah. See those those bricks are laying in the wrong way. They're not tied no. in. No. So would it have made sense to have a wall going across here and have this tiny little addition? It doesn't to me. No. Or so, like I said, or <laughs> was there, but that you wouldn't. It's that yeah. wouldn't make sense. Or mm, well, yeah, I don't no. know. Because I was thinking. See, what I was thinking, I was was this a building? Right. That then they decided to bring it all together. Why would you do that? You know. Or, I don't know another, I mean, or there was a window a, right here. There was a window right there. So I don't know if that has yeah, anything to do I with know. it. I'm not sure. I'm not an architectural or was person, it, so. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. I, I'd be interesting because every time I look from this edge, it always looked like you can see it. there was this, this, and this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which, but you can obviously tell that the, the fireplaces yep. were not added on, they were not original because they weren't, no. the bricks are a little bit different. So these were put in later. Yeah. These ones, right? right there <laughs> yep um yep. but so i'm not sure but you know you can see i'll sc i'll pan up here and you can actually see the uh you know where the other um openings for the pipe for the franklin stoves were and then even if you go up a little bit further if you look at the peak you can tell that the original addition only was on one side of the house because the center of the peak is right there on the fireplace which makes it even for the uh the center of the home here but but we do have, you know, not that we want to take up all your time, we have one more kind one of cool thing. thing that we want to yeah. talk about. So we're going to pan this way. I'll walk down There's there. Brian. So Ooh. original kitchen. Brian, can you walk over there just a little bit? Brian, oh, walk over. You. Kind of where that pile of bricks were. Where Somewhere Brian in here, standing, right? Would have been about the center of the room where the uh, original kitchen was. So as I said, it was detached. And then the fireplace was about six or seven feet back from where Brian is. Now, as I said, 
after the additions were put on, this section over here, I'm pointing right in here, was closed in and made into another kitchen. Behind that was later made into a, another porch. So we're gonna walk over here a little bit and we're gonna try not to fall off this very unstable platform. We're gonna walk over here just a little bit. We wanna talk for a second because we have something else that's kinda cool. So over here, we had a big patio, you know, that actually was poured on slab yep. about, yeah, you know, I mean, over a foot thick. Yeah, because did it come to that wall? It did, wall yeah. Right yeah. It was it was pretty thick. So you can see it right. Part there. of the demo was to take that out. So they broke out all the brick, and uh, then underneath of it was another slab of concrete, but it had this strange <laughs> hole in it, you know, two holes. I, actually, I think that's where they were. Um, that's actually, oh. they, yeah. So yeah. it had, but it had this square hole in it, and you're like, what's that? So they took it off, and what we found is pictures that you're going to see right now, uh, because we can't move this because no. I'm not lifting up a big slab of concrete. No, we can't. But underneath of it is what you're seeing now, and it is the original cistern yes. for the house. Looking at the bricks, we think it's probably the original from what 1826 or real close yeah, to when be. the house was, was originally built. And Brian, you had some insight into cisterns. Yeah, you know, cisterns have been around since the beginning of civilization. I mean, they go all the way back when you, you look at any ancient culture, that's how they would, you know, whenever they got water, they wanted to keep it. Um, so that was one easy way of storing it in cisterns. I mean, and even the house I grew up in had a spring that flowed into a concrete cistern. Okay. So, yeah. you know, we even had that, and that's what we used for drinking water. But I found out that, you know, with cisterns, the one thing that they use them for, uh, they do talk about, is that, you know, with the soaps back then are nothing like what we have today. Right. You really didn't get a good lather, especially if you're using the great hard water here in southwestern Pennsylvania. Um, so the one thing you, you hear them talking about is cisterns were great for washing clothes because it's soft water because it's being collected from downspouting, basically. Yes, exactly. Off of roofs and downspouting. Yep. Now, okay. the, the very earliest cisterns you would have seen people using was they would have had some kind of downspouting and they would have had just simply a barrel. Okay. Um, and they would collect the rainwater like that. But you see with, I'm gonna say a little more well-to-do, you start hearing them talking about, you'll see in, in, in ads for the houses, they have a good well and cistern. You had both of them. Um, but there were some people that espoused that it was better to drink the soft water as opposed to the hard water because I think I, I've talked to you about before during the Whiskey Rebellion when the troops were coming over the mountains they encountered hard water and they said it made the men sick because they weren't used to it yeah or something or they so just, it's because of what like the the lime the lime or? the minerals it's just very mineralized okay um, so they you know they so when you hear that and you hear them about having these cisterns you know the big difference between the cistern and the well is a cistern is lined on the inside, wells are not lined because wells want the water to come in, cisterns are to hold the water from okay, getting out. Yeah. And then you said they're round and then domed on top? Yeah, um, you'll, you'll see a lot of them were domed. Um, some of them did sit above ground, but they talk about problems with that because the water can freeze, especially in northern climates like where we're at. Okay. Um, but a lot of them were, were built in ground like this one here. So, you know, looking at it, it's tough to tell. I mean, you know, look, it looked like it was slightly domed on the interior. It, it was domed on the interior, and then the bottom was definitely lined. You could see, oh, yeah. in fact, if you look in the pictures, you'll see, like, the mortar lining going around so it holds the water. And they even talk about, even in the 1830s, you hear them talking about hydraulic cement. Oh, yeah. So they have hydraulic cement. People think about, what do you mean lined with cement? Well, they had it. Right. You know, they talk about how they made that cement. Well, the made Romans cement. had cement. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, the Romans had it. But I think it. a lot of people think that cement's like a modern right. and, you know, an invention, but it is not. They, right. they had it back then. But, um, you know, again, the, the, the big thing you see them using, and it was, you know, housewives loved the cistern water because it made their job of washing clothes so much easier because it was a lot easier to get a lather right. and make the clothes look nice. <laughs> And smell nice. better. <laughs> they smell better. You know, the, the, when they bathe that one time a year yeah, and, and exactly. wash their clothes, they, they're clean for like 
a week. You know, the, and I was thinking about this was, I, I remember this scene from this movie, and I believe it was from, it was called The Blue and the Gray. It was like one of those 80s miniseries on the Civil War. Okay. All right, but the reason why I'm saying this is because, where we're going because this. this is why. There's, there's, a, there's a scene between, you know, the guy that's having romantic interest in this young girl on the farmstead he's, he stopped at. Okay. And she's washing her hair, and he's like, well, why are you washing your hair? And she goes, well, I know it's not, she, it was a rainy day. And she said, I know that my hair won't dry as soon, but the rainwater makes it soft. So I thought, well, that's a perfect way of thinking cistern, about it. So yeah. here it is. The cistern is the same idea. That's Collect that rainwater for washing clothes, yourself, and, and dishes in your house. In. Okay. So we got our cistern. Now, what we want to do, yeah. um, we were talking today uh, with Rich, who is here in spirit. Yeah, he's somewhere. Wait yeah, a second. We can feel him. Is he on this? Yeah, I know. He's down inside. <laughs> he's down inside. <laughs> <laughs> so about four feet deep. You can yeah, fit. You know. Sorry, oh. sorry, Rich. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Yeah, no yeah, um, about that. But oh, <laughs> just real quick before we go. So the before I go to the, the yeah. what I was going to say, the cistern from where we're standing, which if this thing caved, well, I guess if it was going to cave in, it would have by now. Mm -hmm. You know, over a hundred oh, some yeah. years. But um, where we're standing to the bottom of it is about seven and a half feet. And there's around four and a half feet, four to four and a half feet of water in it right now. I mean, it's still full of water. Yeah, it it's is still holding water. water in there. Um, but what we want to do is get a big silly straw. Is, yeah, no. suck it up. <laughs> um, we're gonna get. We want to pump it out, get it dry, and then actually let Mr. Archaeology down in here do his job. Yep. And what I mean, will we? Thing. It's lined, so we're not going to dig into it. So what will we look for? Well, I mean, a lot of times when cisterns fell into disuse, that was the spot that everyone threw their trash in. Okay. I don't know. This one doesn't look like it fell into disuse. It looks like it was just capped. Okay. But stuff can still migrate down into it. You just never know what you're going to find in the bottom of something. We did find, and I don't have it here. While we were doing work, while we were doing the demoing, and we were keeping stuff. So I, you know, I know people. Yeah, you know, we had a couple people stop by and say, "I can't believe you're tearing it down." And I'm, well, we're tearing down the unstable portion of it yeah. to save the eight. 1826 exactly. portion of it but we're saving as much as we can to reuse them you may not be able to see them but all the hewn beams that were in there we're saving them um we're saving some of the brick to reuse yep. uh you know where some of that might be used out at the fort site some of the brick might be used out at the fort yep. site i'm you know it just kind of depends but um we found 1850s whiskey bottles Wow. Uh, in here. So I don't have one with me right now for you to see, but you know, we found 1850s whiskey, but I think one of them was actually dated 1856. Uh, there was wow. an actual oh, date, like a on. date on it. Yeah. yeah. There, sometimes you'll find us on the bases. And yeah, things like exactly. That. So, you know, it's cool. You know, we're, we're trying to use this as an opportunity because what we talked about is once we clear all this out, where the original kitchen was, maybe even doing a couple test holes yep. to see what we could find. Yeah. You never know what you're going to, I mean, being that this was right out the back of the house, this is where everything would have got dumped. Right. Um, and right. it's interesting because we're, we're pretty sure that that right there behind the camera is the is the exit for the rear of the building. So you would have simply gone out and thrown stuff out. And the same thing here with the kitchen. You'd have been throwing stuff. This would have been the area where everything was getting deposited. Right. All the goodies that we want to find. So we're going to do some work here before we build. We're going to yep. do some work to see what we can find. Uh, and we've got a little bit of time because we're going to be doing some restoration work on the brick to shore mm -hmm. that up, make sure it's all good, even though it's gonna be, not gonna be seen that particular section of it because of the new addition. Um, we still wanna make sure it's in good condition, yep. you know, do restore it the best that we can. And also it'll give us some insight on what we can do on the other side, uh, the other three sides, how to do that restoration You're gonna keep a work. window right through to that stuff there that people can see, right? So I have brought this up, whether it's possible or not depends on the architect uh -huh. and the engineer. But what I think would be really cool is this is gonna be, right in here should end up being part of our all-purpose all room that we're building okay okay i think it would be so cool oh, if we could find a way unfortunately the footer would be right here oh, we could find yeah. a way of spanning that with a beam something like i'd love to leave this open with a glass top that you could look down yep. in on it i just think it would be really cool or if we were over there digging and you found put a glass floor in yeah you yeah. find like like I mean, who knows what you could find there underneath the kitchen. Right. But either neat. Yeah, there's a need to have features like that that are part because it's telling the story of this property, right. this parcel. Which is why I say when we say we're visiting the past to see the future, you know, we are we're learning as we go. You know, one of the great things about the demo was I know some people were sad about seeing part of it go, but 
it was either control demo or watch yeah. it fall in because yeah. it was in bad condition. Um, and you're taking it back to what was the original exactly. building Exactly, we're gonna here. take it back to 1826, you know, what it was gonna I, be. That, that's a good way of doing it. You know, but we're learning. You know, we're learning about the additions, not things that we would have never ever known. You know, when we're finding artifacts, we if we had not demoed, we would have never known the cistern yeah. was here, which is interesting because it's very similar to the one at the Lemoyne House. Now the Lemoyne House one is, there's a stone patio on, uh, behind the home. Mm -hmm. and it sits underneath that. But when you stick a camera in there, take a photo of it, it is almost exactly the same as this one, you know? So maybe the same guy that built it, built this. You know, I don't have. know. You don't know. And so, maybe they built them at the same time. Maybe the original wasn't built with a cistern. Oh, and then, that could be, yeah. And then they built these at the same time. That's very, you, well, I didn't think about you that. You never know about that. Oh, yeah, that's and, why I keep them around. I know. And I mean, that's the thing, you know, it's probably going to be tough for us to say, yes, this was a, this was built contemporaneous with the 1826 building. That's going to be tough to tell. Right. I mean, we um, could try to match up bricks, but it'll yeah, be hard. Yeah, but it's hard. It's hard to do that. Yeah. We can take guesses, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is definitely 19th century. It's probably more mid-19th century right. or a little bit earlier that they built these cisterns. That, that'd be my personal right. guess at it. So, I mean, it may have been something that was done when they did the addition, you know, when they filled in between the kitchen and yeah. the, maybe it was something that was done then i don't know but i mean it's interesting that this thing is right outside the back door that's a good point i never thought you about know that. um so it would be natural Directly to come right out here and, and get your water that's you know that's a really good point right i mean yep. the center of it it's almost dead nuts i mean it. the center because this is over a little bit the center of it was about right here it's almost center with yeah. that door and you know the kitchen was right there so yeah. you know you got this yeah you know, I, I, to me that's just interesting that it's right outside of that it's a really good point you know because the thing is, I think you wouldn't want to have, because people say, why don't you put your kitchen right here? Well, you come out and there's a building right there. Right. You'd want to have it nice out, and open. Off to the side. You'd want it off to the side so you have this open area as you come out the back. And they did have a lot of gardens back in here, yeah. so it kind of makes an open open walkway back to them. Yeah. There could have been a walkway. For all yeah. you know, there could have been a walkway Stone through here. walkway or something. Yep. So stick with us because we're going to be doing probably a searchers episode, maybe a joint. What do we do? What do we do before we call it laid back searchers? Yeah. Maybe we'll yep. do a laid back searchers yep. episode on this, and on we'll this definitely and be doing some work yeah, some on holes. this to see what we can find. So we're yeah. going to see what we can we're turn up. Dig with. through a lot of debris, but hey, yeah. not like I haven't we'll done it before. But I mean, I think the big thing to remember is that yes, we're we're tearing down part of this but it's so we can save the 1826 yes. portion, restore it, but also we're learning so much more than what we would have ever known. Oh gosh, yeah. So we're, we are, I mean, our motto is we're making history by preserving history. That's what we're doing right now. Exactly. So, so all right, well, anything left you want to say? All I can say is let's, um Make sure when we do this work yeah. that it's not like 90 degrees. Seriously, we should go because you're starting to melt. I'm, yeah, I mean, being a day walker, I can walk <laughs> outside, but you know, Brian there's was, only so much. I asked Brian if he could take his sunglasses off because of the glare. Oh he goes, God. no, 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 it'll burn my retinas. My retinas will burn I said, out. okay. So, <laughs> no, but at any rate. But you know what? When we do it, we should let people know and they can come by and check out they if they're can. walking by. Yes, yeah. you will let you know when we're doing it. We'll put something on Facebook, yep. come by and see come what by we're and going on. See what archaeology looks like. Yes, which is really. Honestly, boring. it's kind of boring. It is. It's not, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to say what you see on TV, but it would it's be not. on what you see on TV. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, all right. So, well, again, thank you for joining us uh, for this episode of Laid Back History. Uh, I look forward to seeing what we find here. And uh, I don't know, maybe next week we'll do a road trip. We've been talking about going to the Century Inn and yes. talking about the... Uh, the Whiskey Rebellion flag out yep. there. Maybe we'll do that uh, for next week. I'm not sure, but that'll be coming up in the next few weeks. Oh, heck yeah. So, that'll, that'll be a fun yeah. one. So I guess we'll... S oh, and I do want to thank uh, for this project. I have to mention them because this project is all being done through not only private support, but also through LSA funding. We've got... Oh, well, I don't know, uh, 700 and some thousand wow. dollars in funding from the LSA wow. committee. The Washington County Tourism Promotion Agency, uh, you know, Jeff Catola has been behind this project from the very beginning uh, and has been a huge supporter of it. And so, you know, the Washington County Tourism Promotion Agency uh, helped us with a grant to do uh, a lot oh, of the, the site prep work. And uh, so, and the LSA, so I cannot thank them enough. So everybody that's on that LSA committee, Thank you. We really appreciate it. Uh, I think we are helping to reshape the downtown of, of, of Washington, and it's because of you guys, and also because of our viewers. Yes. Because you guys have donated too, so thank you so much for that. This is what your work is, or what your donations are, are helping to do. So. Yep, stay tuned because 
Big things are coming up. Oh my God, it's spring of 2022. We're gonna be dedicating our new research and education center, dedicating or uh, opening the Lemoyne House back up after some restoration work, opening the Fort site yep. back up, new uh, Underground Railroad exhibit. It's gonna be big. Gonna be a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on in spring of 2022. So. so stay tuned and get ready to come to a bunch of fun, fun <laughs> things. I hope so. Yep. All right, thank you again for joining us and we'll see you next week for another episode of Laidback History.